traveling's fun. You could hop on a boat to Bolivia, a plane to Peru, or even take a dog sled to Dubai. Okay, maybe not the last one, or the first one either actually. But you get the idea, you can travel to a lot of places, and see a lot of weird and wonderful things, like Iceland's very own Phallus Museum. However, most forms of transport, just like the US foreign policy, take fuel. So, in our modern, penis-museumed, ecologically doomed world, what's the cleanest way to travel? Climate change is a serious problem. That is, if you believe it's real. And even if you don't, why would you worry about it? When the oceans rise, they'll just create pretty waterfalls off the edge of our flat Earth, right? Everyone knows what climate change is, and most sane people agree that humans are causing it. The average American produces 16,000 kilograms of carbon dioxide every year. To put that into perspective, it would take more than 700 trees to offset that, and it's the equivalent weight to around three elephants, or $1.6 billion in $100 notes, which, by the way, is enough to build around 500 commercial-sized wind turbines. So how much of these carbon emissions are being caused by transport? Firstly, it's worth noting that the transport sector is way behind the biggest polluter, electricity and heat production, which creates just a touch under half of all the CO2 emissions globally. However, transport does take the silver medal in climate pollution, contributing just over 20% of the global emissions in 2014. Let's spit that down and see how guilty I can make you feel about that European holiday you've got coming up. It probably doesn't come as a huge surprise that air travel is the worst form of travel for the environment, and not just because it kills 10,000 birds each year in the US alone. There are varying rates of carbon pollution for different types of flight, but overall it's several times worse than other forms of transportation. Which means this woman is basically a carbon machine. Flights produce around 1.5% of the global CO2 emissions, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. However, this figure really doesn't give you the whole truth. Firstly, that 1 or 2% of global CO2 is heavily concentrated in countries that have the money to fly around. According to the UK's Department of Transportation, the value is actually somewhere near 6.3% for the UK. And that date is from all the way back in 2005, before YouTube and when Hollaback Girl was number one. Those were the days. There are also all the other parts of the process, like the production of fuel, transportation of parts, and of course the building of the four-storey slide every airport's gotta have. The third thing to take into account is that it's not just CO2 given off by planes. The water vapour and soot create trails. The science behind these isn't fully understood, but they're thought to contribute to climate change. One thing we're pretty sure about is that they're not Turn the friggin' frogs gay! That's on top of the 285 grams of CO2 already pumped out per passenger kilometre. It's estimated that the proportion of the UK pollution caused by aviation is closer to 15%. That's a crazy amount considering the average Brit only takes a short haul flight every two years and a long haul flight every five. So, as with many things, we have to look to the less average, aka the pretty wealthy people, to see a lot of this pollution. Obviously flying more often is a big contributor, but also the amount of people on the plane makes a big difference, making business and first class tickets much worse for the environment. This also means that airlines like EasyJet and Ryanair are better for the environment because they cram as many people into their planes like they're at a James Charles event. Oh, what, too soon? Next up are road vehicles, which create a huge 72% of the transport CO2 in the EU. However, a substantial amount of this comes from transporting goods rather than people. This is shown in other sectors too. International ship traffic, almost all of which is goods transportation, is estimated to contribute nearly double the amount of CO2 aviation does globally. Back in 2009, it was claimed the 15 biggest ships in the world emit as much pollution as all the cars combined. Although that sounds bad, it's by far the best, most efficient way of doing it. If this cargo was flown, it would produce 145 times the amount of CO2. Back to road traffic, the amount of CO2 produced varies by car, engine and number of passengers. But as a guide, a small car with four people in it would create 42 grams per passenger kilometre. Whereas if you didn't have enough friends to fill the seats, you'd be looking at a much higher number. Every pensioner's favourite, the bus comes in a little worse than a full car, but much better than a less full car at 68 grams of CO2 per passenger kilometre. Now I bet if you cycle or walk a lot, you've probably been looking down on all the filthy carbon producers so far. But there's data that suggests that neither of these activities are truly carbon neutral. Cycling is pretty simple, you have to get the bike, and that's made of metal, and you probably got it shipped to you from somewhere. With walking, I have to do a little bit more maths to make you feel bad. Basically, the idea is that if you walk to the shop rather than driving, you use a lot more calories. And if you like certain foods, replacing these calories might be as bad or worse for the environment than it would have been just to drive to the shop in the first place. 
The European Federation of Cyclists put the CO2 per kilometre level for cycling at 21 grams once they had included recuperating the lost calories. However, if we look at the CO2 created purely from the act of travelling itself, we get a clear picture that the bane of every commuter's life, the train, is by far the most efficient way of travelling. So actually, when you're crammed on the train or the underground every day, it's probably just because they're trying to be more fuel efficient and nothing about the money. Because of their high passenger numbers, trains only emit 14 grams of CO2 per passenger kilometre, which is less than half of the next form of motorised transport. Amazingly, that cycling report I just talked about puts the average greenhouse gas emissions for just the fuel a cyclist needs at 16 grams per kilometre. So in theory, it creates less pollution to get a kilometre on a train than it does on a bike. However, this doesn't factor in any of the often poorly organised infrastructure around the rail network, and therefore all in all, cycling and walking unsurprisingly win out. So what can we do about our transport emissions? I say just stay at home and vegetate watching Jeremy Kyle. Oh, I guess we better do something about it then. For road traffic, it comes down to making cars more efficient. For example, not using fuels that we've known were worse for years, sharing cars more often, and eventually switching to electric powered cars. Some countries have set deadlines where fossil fuel car production will be outlawed. In the UK, the mark is set at 2040, but most environmental groups say this isn't nearly soon enough. And with the average age of a car in the UK being 8 years, it will take us to nearly 2050 before we really start seeing all electric traffic. For international shipping and aviation, waste forward are surprisingly similar. There are improvements to be made to the fuel efficiency of these vehicles. If they were to make their trips more slowly and plan them more carefully, then this could knock off another chunk of emissions. And there are more ambitious ideas to get these industries to embrace solar technology to power onboard amenities. Until all of that happens though, you're best off walking, cycling or using efficient public transport like trains to get around if you want a clear conscience. One piece of advice I can give you is to not ride on the back of a cow. These bad boys push out 70 to 120 kilograms of methane every year. Although saying that, using some pretty dodgy maths, I reckon they're still more efficient than getting on a plane. Thanks for watching my video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and stick around for plenty more to come. Let me know if you have any video topic suggestions, what you think about transport emissions, and if they should bring back Jeremy Kyle. Spoiler, they definitely shouldn't. <laughs>